Hey everyone, welcome to the Art of Passive Income uh, Roundtable podcast. With me is like a pretty cool group of land investors, but we are missing Mark. Mark is out today, but we, the show goes on without him. You see, that's what happens when you don't sh you know, show up. You have other priorities. With me, though, is you know him, Zen Master Mike Zeno. Mike, how's it going? It's going good. So I got my neighbor beeping because my dog jumped out of the yard again. But hey, your dog jumps spot. out of the yard. Neighbors are beeping. Yeah. What, what are they yelling? Like Tom Brady, you know, Tom Brady's in the hood or what? <laughs> yeah. They're saying, where is that jerk letting his dog out again? No, I don't know. But everything's great. I'm doing great. Now, I'm not a huge, you know, I watched it for the commercial, so it was a win for me. Yeah. It's okay to, to admit that you watched it for Justin Timberlake. It's okay. It's okay, Mike. I was under the impression it was Lady Gaga. Slightly disappointed. Oh, yeah. See, they, they set you up for that one, huh? All right. Slightly. With us also is Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how's it going? Hey, it's, it's going pretty good after a harrowing weekend. What happened? What happened? <laughs> uh, Bearland Bryce, our first teenage driver, had a pretty significant fender bender. He rolled his vehicle, but, um, you know, God's on our side, and he is fine. And his friend that was with him is fine. So... The vehicle's a total, but the important thing is everybody's all right. Oh, good so to hear that. That's tough as a parent. Yeah, yeah, glad to hear that. With me also is Eric, Eric Peterson. Eric, how's it going? I'm doing good, thanks. Good, good. Uh, with us also is Scott Bossman. There's going to be two Scots on here. The Scots are taking over this week. Scott, how's it going? I'm doing well, thanks. Digging out of the snow here in Wisconsin. Yeah, why, why is it? Why is it that you guys, like, want to live where it's cold? Like, Tate, do you understand that? No. Like, it builds I mean, character, Scott. It does not build character. It builds character. It, what are you guys talking about? Short I mean, sleeves. That's Man, crazy. I was in the pool. I'm wearing short sleeves today. It's 10 degrees out. Yeah. All right. Well, I was, yeah. I was in the pool on Sunday. So, you know. Touche. Yeah. All right. And clearly, if you haven't figured it out, Tate is with us as well. Tate, welcome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the, making the introduction easy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, today, let's talk about, let's talk about something that's really uh, prevalent right now. And it's, you know, like the craziness in the markets. The cryptocurrencies are going crazy. You know, Bitcoin, man, it, it like ran up. Everybody, like there were instant millionaires from Bitcoin. But there was also... Like everybody was loving the stock market, but then in just a matter of days, like the stock market has like tanked. And I'm sure it will be back. Like, you know, when you bet on America, you're betting like in the stock market. I'm sure we'll be back. It's a short term blip. But that said, I mean, can you imagine like what it would be like if our land had like a price on it? Like every single minute it's updated. Mike, how, how in the world would you function if you had to like look at the, the pricing of the, the land every single minute. And then what do you think about the stock market and these Bitcoin things? I don't know. I don't think I could crack the KIP cryptocurrency code. You know, I mean, if I had to crack the code like on that, like a if land was that hard. I don't know. Jeez. I mean, it's just such a different model. And uh, there's no way I could figure that cryptocurrency. And I'm, you know, and I, I've done some stock trading, you know, a little bit when I was in college, you know, those kind of like examples you go through. I just was, not for me. And I think that uh, there are people that are very skilled at it and, you know, they are, they're in charge of retirement plans and things of that nature. But, you know, I, the land is such an easier model. It's just uh, so streamlined, so simple, so automated, right? I mean, you talk about the five plates, right, Scott? I mean, we got these yeah. five plates of the business and you spin them and then they connect like gears and it's just a machine. It's just, it's just you know, you, you put money in and more money comes out. It's kind of bizarre, but it's uh, no complaints here. <laughs> I mean, it is weird though, because like, you know, it, it's so funny. And I mean, I found myself like looking at this the other day, cause I was looking at, you know, the cryptocurrencies and I'm thinking like, oh man, I'm missing the boat over here. And then, you know, you see this just massive increase in the stock market, you know, over a period of time, you know, record highs. And then I'm thinking like, man, I'm missing the boat over there. Mike, did you feel like you were missing the boat at all? No, no, because in the, uh, I'm, uh, I think, you know, my boat is a different ship, you know, I got land, you know, and it's my land deals, you know, we'll buy more land, sell more land than ever. Um, you know, everything is just growing at such a great pace and because of, you know, the understanding we've developed. So no, I don't feel like, I feel like 
people are missing this boat, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a, it's not a very big boat to get on, right? It's a small niche, right? It's just like, uh, you know, people can like, they oh, look at this, the uh, stock market boat. And then here comes a little land boat. And no one sees it, right? Nobody's jumping on it. But here we go, like waving. Hey, everybody. You know, it's like, boom, out to sea we go. We, we're, we're making money. So no, I don't feel like I missed any boat. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't, no way. <laughs> wow. No, no shiny object syndrome for Mike, but Bearland Aaron, what about you? Are you were you looking at the stock market, Bitcoin? Did you do anything with those two? Are you still doing anything with those two? Uh, actually, yes. Um, wow. When I first started, I was mostly in the market, so I pulled oh probably like ninety percent out to go into land and. Um, so I was looking, what I have left in there now is actually kind of a hedge, kind of a fun, not a fun, but just a group of investments that are a hedge against the market. So if it starts doing really poorly, I should do better. But that's the only thing I left in. And so I definitely did miss the boat on all those gains. But, you know, I'm looking at, uh, you know, one of the charts right now said I had a taxable gain of 3.32%. That is pretty sad when compared to what we do here in our business. Um, you know, and I'm actually even considering pulling the rest of it out to buy some more land because, you know, maybe the market will go down. Maybe it won't for a while. But, you know, I can I can put that money into land and sell that and make, 300 to a thousand percent like where is the like where's the decision there you know um it just takes takes some time to wrap your head around it and really realize you know once you've got it going you know go all in because it's just the, there's nothing else out there that's gonna do this on a regular basis sure you might make a ton of money one time off an investment because the market swings really hard one way or another. But, you know, you're not going to do that day after day after day like we're able to do. So, so yeah, I was in it. I'm in it just a little bit, but I'm still pulling out because there's something much better on the horizon. That's crazy. And it's crazy too. It's funny that you, you talk about like how it's much better and that people just don't know about it. It, it is absolutely amazing kind of, you know, the fact that people will look at something and, you know, kind of, kind of discount it because they don't know much about it. And I guess I'm doing the same thing with like the cryptocurrency. I don't really know much about it. I'm like, yeah, it's pretend, it's pretend stuff. But Eric, you have any insight on any of those two things, the stock market or Bitcoin or the, the currencies? Yeah. So I just, you know, as we're talking about this, I just started thinking about, um, you know, the stock market and, and even cryptocurrencies even more so, um, just the volatility that, that um, you know, as a player in those arenas that you experience and um, comparing that to land. And, uh, you know, the only volatility we really have is, you know, defaults. And sure, you know, if the economy gets bad, we can have more defaults, but ultimately we have assets behind those defaults. So, we're not really losing in the end. I mean, sure, it could, um, you know, we could have less cash flow and, and things of that nature, um, but we still have the assets. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of how I look at it. It's funny because, um, you know, like to, to me, like the, the biggest challenge that I, I have when it comes to stocks is really the fact that I don't control it, right? Like, you know, essentially I'm giving my money to the, to the stock market and, you know, yeah, I own stock in a company and that stock is going to go up if the company management does well and it's going to go down if they don't do well. And maybe it's just me working for a, you know, for a large company, a large publicly traded company. And you look at the management sometimes and you're like, holy cow, they're making these decisions and they're messing with my money. When it comes to land, like you just said, like you own it, you you're managing that asset. It's it's all up to to really you and how you how you manage it. And I agree, it's kind of it's kind of cool when you think about it like that. Sense that you're the one that's driving it. You are the management of it, and you know you're not 
you're not in it for anybody else. And then at the end of the day, you just own an asset. Scott, Scott Bossman, what do you think, man? Oh, I totally agree. I mean, <clears throat> with land, I can sleep well at night. <clears throat> I know what I'm waking up to the next morning. I know what my portfolio looks like. I know it's not going anywhere. Uh, I mean, look what happened yesterday with the stock market. It's over, what, 1,500 point drop in one day. I mean, I look at, uh, I got a lot of money sitting in a retirement account. I looked at that last week and I thought, wow, that looks amazing. And then I looked at it this week and, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's just one of those things where uh, land is such a, it's such a stable investment and uh, the returns are phenomenal and uh, glad I found it for sure. Awesome. Tate, are you uh, messing with cryptocurrencies at all? You know, because you've been trying to get me I, to do it. And I'm listen, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I did. I had shiny object syndrome of the worst <laughs> type. I uh, I bought into it. Um, I did quite a little bit of trading in it, and to be honest, I made some money. Um, it was really awesome. And then I kind of started coming to my senses a little bit, and maybe about the last month or so when I first when I saw my first real dip, and I thought. I don't know. I don't know. I had friends who were saying, go all in, go all in. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, what am I buying? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm buying right now, but it's very valuable. I can buy a little bit and sell it for a little bit more periodically. And so as of, I don't know, mid January, I actually got out of it entirely. And I'm trying to close that chapter of my life. I'm not going back to it. I'm, I'm done, especially after what I'm seeing right now. I mean, I was on the phone last night with a really good friend of mine and he was making, you know, he was one of those overnight, I don't know, thousandaire. He made a ton of money on this. He wasn't a millionaire from it, but he made tons and tons of money on it. And I called him yesterday and he said, I'm down 50% on my portfolio. And I was like, oh, I don't even, I'm sorry. Maybe it'll turn around. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I look at what's going on with our note portfolio and it's like nothing's changed. Despite the stock market, despite the cryptocurrencies, it's just kind of remained the same. And for better or worse, it's just consistent. I mean, every month you sell a little piece of property, you get a little bonus, right? It's a little raise every single month. And so, Scott, I know you're over there happy as can be, but I'm out. I'm out of it. I listened. I'm done. Okay. All right. So, so listen, Tate, t today is what, February, it, beginning of February, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I want everybody to know what Tate did to me. I, I want you guys to know, I'm going to go back to the transcripts because I just pulled them up, right? January 16th, January 16th, Tate sends me a Vox. It says, and I'm quoting here, time <laughs> to buy our Bitcoin. It's at 11,300. Me, LOL. <laughs> the response from Tate says, you can't afford not to. Tate, Tate, what's $7,300? I would have, if listening to Tate's financial advice, I would have lost like $4,000 per like coin Woo. I mean, I don't even know what to say. Um, that's what happens when you invest in invisible things. <laughs> now, for those of you that can't see, Tate's yeah. face is really, really red right now. He can't, believe, he, he can't believe he's, <laughs> his words have come back to haunt him. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. But I will say, you know, I've closed that chapter of my life right now. It sounds and like it's the right time to buy. Uh, <laughs> there's blood in the streets there is that argument right well you, you could be like uh you know like uh, warren buffett says like buy when everybody's fleeing right like buy when everybody's afraid to but it, I, I mean it it take you bring up a very valid point you know real assets eric said it real asset you know at the end of the day at the end of the day um you know i think that that's really what you have to look at you know i think you have to determine whether an asset is right for your portfolio based on number one, do you understand it, right? Like, 
I truly, and I'm just being honest, you know, like, and, and Tate was kind of ma- making me feel bad around, around the January 15th timeframe. Uh, actually at the last boot camp, when he said to me, I can't, he said to Mark and I, he said, I can't believe you guys are like so involved with technology that you don't like you're, you're, you're missing out on the cryptocurrency. And I was really starting to feel bad. I'm like, man, is this one of those investments that, you know, like is like, you know, that I'm really missing out on because I, I haven't studied it. And I went back and I studied it and it, to me, it Bitcoin and all those cryptocurrencies, they're, they're. I think that they have a place in the future uh, to what level, I don't know yet, but I think it just goes back to even setting up some rules of investing that you have. Like if, if you don't understand an investment, maybe you should stay out of it. Mike, do you have any like rules and I'm going to circle this back around to land, but do you have any rules of land investing that like you follow every single time? I mean, I think I, I like I do, do you have any that you know, it's like if it doesn't have this, you're out? Yeah, I mean, we uh, review a ton of deals. You know, we've sent out a ton of mailings. We have a lot of deals coming in, and there are certain kill points, right? I mean, we want the best of the best. So, yeah, we, you know, it's something, you know, it's a thing that kind of reminds me to pull this kind of back full circle is our business is boring, but that's a good thing. I always tell people this is a repeatable redundant process, AKA it's boring, but since it's boring, we can develop systems as you're talking about or criteria. We can develop VAs and software and delegation. Uh, we can use uh, tools such as LG pass and we can, we can automate it. So boring serves us well. So yeah, I do have <coughs> criteria, you know, looking at land, you know, if I have, and, I, and it goes back to what you always call it too, Scott, the uh, gotta have landitis, right? So if you send out a couple of mailings here and there uh, and you get a few back, then you're going to be really vested in those re- um, accepted offers. And it's going to lead you to maybe make a decision that you wouldn't if you had a selection of 10 or 20 properties to choose from. Uh, so having that, having that volume is important. But I mean, I do think that it's important to start the business on a micro level. And you, as you always, uh, you know, kind of give the instructions uh, 20 a day, 100 a week, it brings a little bit in just to process the flow. But that flow has to slightly increase and you have to learn how to handle it. So part of that is having a criteria to look at a large selection. Like I it was told to me in the beginning, like you should every day, like what I should be doing, I should have a stack. Now it's a digital stack, but I should have a digital stack of properties where these are accepted offers and counter offers. What do you like? Hmm, well, this is good. This is good. This is good. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I'll revisit that maybe another day when my deal flow really slows down. So I, I think, yeah, there's definitely, and I think but it, it traces back to having choice and choice comes back to having massive action on uh, what the most arguably the most important part of our business is, is the county research and the mailing. So those two components create everything else and allow you to have a very selective process when you buy land because you have choice. It's like going to a buffet. It's like, well, maybe this, maybe that, as opposed to going to a pizza buffet and all you can choose is pizza, maybe some pepperoni. I don't know. We get to get the full buffet, right? And we check, we choose what we love and then that's what we get. <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, a good analogy. All right. We just went from cryptocurrencies <laughs> all the way back to food and a man that knows his food because he's out there like, I don't know. Killing it. Killing it himself. <laughs> Bear land. Baron. <laughs> rules for investing in land. What do you got? Uh, rules. We buy. I don't. There's not a lot that I don't buy now. I don't buy everything. I, I guess there are rules because like if I bought everything that I had an accepted offer on, I would have like run out of money a long, long time ago to buy land. So, um, you know, I only buy things if I can buy them at my offer or less, you know, I don't really entertain that, uh, meeting in the middle with the counter offer, you know, I mean, we, I like the counter offer cause it opens up a conversation, but, um, I'm not gonna usually meet now when I had the Got to have landitis. Yeah, that was a thing. But then I, you know, I realized that, you know, when you start raising your, your amount, you're willing to pay, um, you start limiting yourself on the back end. Um, you know, it makes it like if, if 
for some reason that area just didn't sell really well it makes it a little harder to uh, wholesale something or to get rid of it maybe on another platform that uh, where you can just kind of get rid of it for cash quickly that sort of thing so um, I have some pricing rules um, I used to have rules about some areas um, in certain counties I just wouldn't buy in there anymore after I had some bad luck but then you know I found if you can break the code of that area then that can open that up too and now you know we've got some rules for that area um, that actually make it a pretty good area where uh, if you stick to these rules really tightly, um, you can do pretty well. But if you even step outside of them, uh, all of a sudden you're in a bad spot. So um, yeah, we definitely have some rules. Most of them are kind of around pricing, not so much the actual piece of land. Because like Mark says, everything does sell. But if you can get into it right, you're in a better position, even yeah. if you have to hold it a little longer, you know. Yeah, rules for buying. That's, I think that's a good thing. Eric, you have, you have some rules that you follow? I think Aaron kind of touched on my main point, and that is that, um, you know, if I can't buy it at the price that I'm comfortable with, I'm moving on, you know. Um, I think that's, it's a little hard to do up front when you're just starting, but once you understand the business and you know kind of full cycle and, and everything else, um, you know, that's a pretty easy rule to live by because you know there's just another deal right around the corner. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, over time, uh, if you work in accounting a lot, you might start to develop some kind of filters and rules based on, you know, just what you know from your experience of, of what sells, what doesn't sell, what, you know, hangs around for a long time. And, you know, you don't really want that in your inventory kind of stuff. And um, I mean, really, that's, that's all there is to it. Awesome. Scott, Scott Boss, many rules? Yeah, some rules in my business. Uh, I mean, it's really a numbers game, right? So I try to follow rules of, you know, if, I, if I'm getting 800 to 1,000 offers out a month, uh, I'm going to have a lot of deals to do due diligence on. So that's a personal rule is, is getting the offers out. And, uh, you know, our automated systems make that possible. LG Pass, I mean, you're, you're able to get those offers out, out the door with, at the click of a button, which is pretty phenomenal. And then, you know, it just comes down to doing uh, due diligence and uh, making sure that I'm buying pennies on the dollar and I'm getting 300 to 1,000% return or that, you know, 72% annual yield on those terms deals. So, uh, you know, making sure that the numbers are there, making sure there aren't back taxes and liens on the property uh, and that it's going to be a good investment for me. Cash deals, I'm a little more lenient on. I mean, if I can double my money, uh, I'll do that all day long. So who, who wouldn't, who would, right. Tate, what rules do you have rules for buying, selling, whatever? I mean, they're pretty simple, right? Nothing, nothing really different than what other people stated here. I'm looking at how long it's going to take me to recover my initial investment, what the comps are and how quickly I can get it done, uh, and assigned to somebody else. Cause ultimately I'm not a land collector, right? I'm a land seller. I don't want to collect anything. And I kind of learned that basically, you know, watching Mike Zeno, Mike Zeno holds, he doesn't collect any land, right? It's in and out his door pretty much immediately. And that's, that's pretty powerful when you learn that it's quick to, it's better to get this stuff on contract ASAP or flipped or whatever you need to do to get that money coming back in. So that's my, that's our, you know, business model. And we're making sure that ultimately we provide a good return to our, uh, to our investors, right? Our families. And if we can do that, then it makes sense. All right. All right. Good, good rules to live by. And, uh, you know, don't, don't let Tate, that's one of my rules. Don't let Tate talk me into Bitcoin, man. I uh, dodged that one. You did. All right. <laughs> we are at that time. You know what time it is, right? It's the tip of the week time. Mike Zano is looking confused. Mike, what's your tip of the week? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, just kidding. Just Thanks. kidding. Because, because the community spoke and they said that they wanted to hear tips alternating between Mike and I think it was Bear Land Aaron. Is that right? No, I, I <laughs> yeah. think it was actually Eric No Name Peterson. All right, all right. I, I'm, not, I'm not giving him a nickname. But Eric, I tried to cover for you as long as I can. But the community but, has spoken. But, oh, but 
What? Don't you think they might want to hear from, you know, someone we don't hear from? Right well, now? we're going to throw that out there. We're going to throw that out there for okay. the community to decide. But we will <laughs> deliver our promise. So, okay. <laughs> Eric, what is your phenomenal tip of the week? All right. So we are going with um, an app today that I use to manage my mail. Um, so like most of us, you know, my domains are set up with Google. I use, you know, Gmail to, to host those email accounts. And um, I am not a big fan of checking my email in the browser. So um, I've always been looking for like the perfect email app. I don't like the, the mail app on the, on the um, Apple platform. So I don't use that a lot. And I came across Shift. S H I F T. It's called uh, the website is tryshift.com. And I've looked at this before and I may have even recommended it before, but they've made some updates in the past couple months that um, made it work for me. And um, basically, it's just an email client, you know, lets me connect my email accounts to it. But along with that, I can still utilize some Gmail extensions and apps that I would only have access to in the browser otherwise. So for example, I talk a lot about Mixmax and that I use that for um, my templates and sequences and different things like that. So Shift allows you to use the Mixmax plugin, which to me, um, that was what I needed in order to be able to move outside of the browser. So that's my tip of the week. I really like it. Um, yeah. Nice. I like it. I'm going to nice. try shift. I like it a lot. <laughs> I, I will tell you that uh, I, I have used this. I stopped using it for a while. And I can't remember why I stopped using it because I really did like it. Because Eric, like you said, I don't like looking at the email in the browser. Mm -hmm. And I got rid of all the notifications. And I think what happened was um, it caught me at a time where it wanted me to pay for it. And I just didn't want to pay for it. So yeah. I'm like deleted, but I'm looking and I can't remember if I still have it on. No, I don't have it on my computer right now. Yeah. So I, I think, think I did solid. pay for it. That's, that's a good point. I think I did pay like an annual fee for it. Um, and the, the other thing I forgot to mention too, is I have Slack integrated into shift so I can toggle between my um, email accounts and then down to Slack and communicate with my VAs and stuff. So it's kind of like a all-in-one communication tool for me. 30 right. bucks a year. So Yeah, that's nothing, right? That's good. No. All right. I think this was a good roundtable. I went, want to remind you or invite you, like if you're thinking about starting land investing and you want to learn more, go to... Uh, to me, the best place to go to learn about land investing is, is flight school. You know, go, you can go to thelandgeek.com forward slash uh, training and learn more about that. Uh, you can get on a call with Scott Bossman or Mike Zano. Talk to them. See if flight school and land investing is the right thing for you. You know, I think, I think it's uh, an incredible story. It's changed a lot of lives. You just have to take that next step and Flight school is a great way to do it. And you get to spend time with me too, which is, I think it's kind of cool, but maybe, maybe, maybe you want some, but something else more involved training, whatever. It's all good. Just take the action, take the next step because it, you, you will thank yourself for at least learning more and uh, look forward to having you guys here again next week. Thanks for joining us. We will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, guys. All right. Another one good. is done. That's good, man. There's a lot. There's a lot less um, shenanigans when Mark's not on the call. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> why is that? Why is he's that? got too much free time? That's why. Too much free time. I miss God's cup of water. God's cup of water. Jeez. See, that's what it is. Like you know, we we. I think it's all because we get to pick on Mark, right? Like, he's larger than life. <laughs> see, I think what happens is Mike. Mike fires the, the shell, like the bomb at Mark, 
I fire one back at Zeno and we all start like launching at each other. And I'm not sure who comes out like, you know, and then, then Bearland gets all excited and he takes his big claw and like knocks us all down. Takes it to another he level. Takes and it yeah. does far, yeah. too and far. Then, and then, then it ends, right? Like it ends when Bearland like gets After too he rough. Apologizes. After he gets, he, he gets too rough. Well, first it gets okay. awkward. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's yeah, awkward. It's awkward. <laughs> and then he apologizes, and then he feels bad. But you know, I think it's Bearland that always ends this podcast. Like he's yeah. the one that we have it's to a, end it. It's it's assured mutual destruction, isn't it? You know what it's like though. It's it's like it's like uh, all the kids are at the playground playing nicely, and then Bearland Aaron <laughs> comes along, comes and and then he gets he gets <laughs> mad because. He, he, he gets, he doesn't get mad. What happens is he gets sweet. too excited. He gets too excited. He's like, I can't take it anymore. Rah! And he launches at all of us. And then we're like, our moms are calling us home now. Yeah, he's the guy who doesn't get a bed to sleep over twice. He doesn't come to the slumber party twice. One he's time. too excited. He's too excited. Too hyper. Yeah, the, there's a Warren Zevon song called Excitable Boy. You have to go. listen to that one. There you go. <laughs> Warren, Warren Zevon. Oh, uh, Okay. Brown Eyed, or that's uh, Van Morrison. Uh, Werewolves of London, you know that song? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that's my, him. Listen, if it's not Johnny Cash, Mike Zano's <laughs> out. He, he doesn't understand. He understands the highway, man. That's about it. Every man in black. day, right? Right, Mike? Every night. I turn Every it on night. and do a little workout. Uh, Mark has embraced the beauty of that album, The Highway Man. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's fulfilling in many levels. I don't know, man. I love me some cash. Yeah. That's how you get a new car. Just follow John and Cash's advice. <laughs> <laughs> one part at a time. One, one part at a time, man. That's yeah. a great song. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks for joining today. Yep. See you. Hey, did you guys hear? Did you hear the uh, the?